Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. So if you'd have seen the last video that I posted, I've actually acquired a six inch machinist vice here for the Warco mill. And yeah, it's brilliant. It's a big old bulky vice, but there's some tooling that I want to be able to use on the six inch vice and the four inch vice. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. We're gonna be machining an end stop that can be used across both vices to make making repeatable fixtures really easy. The part we're going to be making today is going to be identical to this one that I've 3D printed just to test that everything lines up and it works how I thought it would work when designing this in CAD. So the idea being here that the fixed jaw on both the 6 inch and the 4 inch vise they're different thicknesses. So because of that I've made this end stop adjustable so it can accommodate for the different thicknesses there. So this in a sense goes on the end here. You can screw it down nice and tight. And then with that, you can use a piece of metal or a rod to essentially set the distance where you want that end stop. So this is what we're gonna be make machining today. Gonna to be making this out of some mild steel and hopefully it all goes well. Should end up looking identical to this piece here. To begin with then, over on the milling machine, we need to take this down to very close to final dimension and also at the same time square up this block. By taking consecutive passes with the end mill and rotating the workpiece in the vise, I can achieve those close to final dimensions and get this part pretty square. So with those parts all now taken close to final dimension and squared up on the mill, it's over to the surface grinder just to give this part a really nice final finish and also get myself even closer to that final dimension as I'm working to a set of technical drawings that I've made for this build. With all those faces now cleaned up then, it's over to the surface plate to see how close we've got to our final dimensions. So checking first with a 20mm gauge block, I can then double check how close our part is to that and see if I'm happy with the tolerance. So reading here we've got about 0.05mm of deviation across this part. So for a 20mm part, I'm really happy with that we've managed to hit that dimension bang on first time. Now coming back in with a 30 millimeter block, just zeroing out this on the DTI, we can then come back in and check the part. Okay, we've still got a little bit more to go on this one. It's looking a little bit like we're about 0.15 millimeters over. So a couple of passes on the surface grinder, and we should get down to about zero. So just one final check here. And yeah, we're looking pretty good. We're about 0 0.0405 millimeters out, so that's pretty good. So last thing to do then on the block preparation here, it's just chamfer all the edges. Everyone loves a chamfer and it's going to make the part look and feel really nice. So I'm just doing a 0.5 millimeter chamfer here, nothing major, and just using that back fixed jaw as a reference to do some speedy chamfering. And with that done, the part is now looking awesome. Nice clean surface ground faces, and a really nice mellow chamfer to make the part look good. So with all the prep work done, we can actually start with some of the machining work now 
to make this thing act as an end stop. So first thing we need to do is just get a reference here that we can work from the back furthest corner and this face here. So if I had an end stop this would be really easy for all future processes but unfortunately I don't. So that's what this video is all about. We're aiming for 6mm depth of cut into this block, so just using the quill DRO I can get those values pretty close as I have got a bit of tolerance here to play with on this depth. So getting towards the end here I'm just reducing my depth of cut, adding a bit of lubricant just to get a really nice final surface finish in there. And just a little trick I picked up from a video I saw Using a hacksaw just to take out these inner corners will make seating this onto the machine vise really nice. So next process we're going to be doing here is flipping the part in the vise and we're going to be drilling out to allow the hole for the machinist end stop float that we're going to be able to use to get into smaller areas. So drilling this out close to 6mm I can then come back in with a reamer. As I want this thing to be a really nice close fit, I just felt like a reamer was probably the best thing to do here. And that way I know this hole is going to be pretty close to 6mm, if not a bit oval, but fairly circular. And you can just see here the reamer is struggling a little bit. I probably should have took a little bit more out with the drilling operation, but I managed to get it through. And then finally, just cleaning up those edges with the Noga deburring tool. So that's the through hole sorted. We now need to drill and tap some holes to allow for some grub screws, which is going to secure that bar in there when we want to adjust it. So starting off, we're going to be using a spot drill just to get these positions really accurate. And then after that, going to be coming in with a 4.2mm drill to drill these out to accept an M5 tap once the holes are all done. So with those all done, we come back in with an M5 tap and just using the quill to centre this up to make sure these holes are nice and perpendicular to the surface of the workpiece. Moving on to the next feature on this part then, and these three holes in my opinion are what make this end stop really unique and really versatile for the use across multiple vices. So the three holes that we're drilling here, the two outer ones are going to be what's allowing the guide rails to make the sliding action of this end stop really smooth while the centre one is what we're going to be using for the lead screw to go through and tighten this bad boy up. So due to having to split this in a minute and the holes not being the same size on the front and rear part of this end stop I'm going to have to go in now with a 4.2mm before we come back and we part this off and drill these out further. So just zeroing out my slitting saw here on the top, I can then set the distance down and begin the slitting saw operation. And I've just noticed that the slitting saw isn't going to get all the way through with this setup. So we're going to have to retract that and change the setup. Shit on it. Oh dear, what can I say? This isn't really ideal. Bearing in mind this is my only slitting saw of this thickness that I have. So, it's put me in a bit of a sticky situation. I've ordered some more of these, but they're not going to be here for a while. So, I think the only thing to do 
to part this off nicely and accurately is I'm going to stick this over on the lathe and try parting this off in the four jaw chuck. Fingers crossed we don't end up scrapping this part because if we do I'll be really annoyed as I could have just waited for the slitting saw to arrive but let's give it a go. Moving over to the four jaw chuck then just putting some brass strips in here to hopefully prevent any damage to that really nice surface finish we acquired over on the surface grinder before dialing this in ready to part this off. So just using a DTI here, just tapping in the high spots to try getting this thing completely level before coming back in and parting it off. To begin with then, this is a fairly interrupted cut as we're parting a square feature, not a round feature. But once it got going, that interrupted cut stopped and went in pretty smoothly. So just cleaning up that parted off face on the surface grinder, just you know, why not? Got a surface grinder, let's use it. So as I've had to use the parting tool instead of the slitting tool, we've actually reduced this clamping area on the end stop. So I'm just coming back in and taking off a little bit more to account for the amount that we've removed from that two millimeter parting blade instead of the 0.5 millimeter slitting saw that I was using. With that done, we can relocate onto the holes that we made earlier and just drill these out to final depth and also final diameter for what we need. So the two outer ones are gonna be an M5 tapped hole. So just using a 4.2 millimeter drill there. And this center one's gonna be an M6 so drilling that out to a 5mm hole. And with all that drilling done, we can then come back in and tap these out. Just hand tapping this to make sure nothing goes wrong. And then finishing up the final bit with the handle on the tap. And that is that piece all finished. So moving on to the rear block here. We can use that 4.2 millimeter hole that we drilled earlier just to locate the part before coming in and drilling these out to what we need them to be. So these two outer holes, we need to be drilled out to five millimeters to accept the five millimeter sliding bolt that's gonna be going through there. And the center one, we need to drill out to 6.5 millimeters just to allow a through hole for our six millimeter lead screw. So with that all now done, we can assemble this for the first time and see how it's gonna look. So just taking apart the 3D printed one that I've made, I can take apart all the hardware and reuse that because it doesn't make sense to make any more of this. So with all that off, we can now reassemble this back into the metal one. So a lot of this hardware is just cut down bolts. Some of them are smooth shank bolts, other ones standard bolts. And with that all assembled, seems to fit really nice and operate really freely. So the last little job we need to do is I need to make the bar, which is going to allow for the fine adjustments and just getting into any smaller pieces. So essentially this is going to be a six millimeter rod with a nice curved edge on the end and going to make it a little bit larger at one end so we can't push it all the way through. So just adding that nice curved feature in here with a file, it's a bit rough and ready, but for what I need it for, this is gonna work perfect. And just giving it one final touch up with some Scotch-Brite, just to clean up any imperfection and hopefully improve the final surface finish of this. Last thing left to do now then really, is just to part this off. Finally then, we have all the pieces now machined to get this thing fully assembled 
and see how it finally performs over on the machinist vice. So I just want to take a minute to look at this in all its glory and just see how nice this final piece really is. That surface ground finish is amazing. So assembly of this is really smooth. Essentially we can slide the rear jaw over onto the front jaw and using the standard M6 washers and nut we can secure all this together. And just look how smooth that operation is. Silky. So last piece to add into this now is just that bar we've just made over on the lathe and that slides in that reamed hole with a nice tight secure fit and once in floats around fairly nice. So mounting this on a machinist vice for the first time we can see just how this is going to work and it clips over that little overhang that we've got on the fixed jaw and just tightening that up gives that a really nice snug fit and yeah that's not going anywhere. That about sums up this end stop build then. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and until next time happy machining guys.